All right, Valentine's Day weekend. Love is in the air. Not my air, though. And Alex, not your air either. Yeah, yeah, definitely not my air. And I know it's, love's not being pumped through to the vents in the Leah Core Center or McGonagall Hall because teams are showing no love to, to Temple Athletics. But volleyball is showing no love to the other teams. And you know who we have a lot of love for? John Chaney. So we're covering all of that plus more on this week's episode of Temple Timeout. But first, let's take a timeout. What's up guys? Philadelphia has been covering snow for a week now, but thank God we're here because you know we always bring the heat. Brooklyn, how are we? Alex, I can't complain. We were supposed to be talking some men's basketball right now, but some positive COVID tests for the ECU program postponed their next two games. First game of home and away series was slated for yesterday at noon at the Leah Corps Center and the second tomorrow at noon away at ECU. Both games have been postponed and Temple has since scheduled a makeup game at Cincinnati for tonight at 7 p.m. That's right. These teams met last Thursday. Uh, they ended up a nail butter on North Broad. Cincinnati was coming off a two week pause and had opted to start a walk on against the Owls in their own building. Disrespectful. But cost of turnover late in the fourth quarter ended up being the deciding factor in a 63 to 60 loss to Cincinnati. Uh, and in that game, Temple didn't have an answer for David Douglas. He put up 26 points to me. It felt like 50. The Owls are going to be putting in some extra overtime in the film room to see if they can stop him tonight. Uh, and since they last played, the Bearcats have one win against Tulane. So we'll see. The women's team was back in action on Wednesday at McGonagall, and it ended in another frustrating loss to Houston on the season. Temple got dominated for just about all four quarters here. They let four Cougars score in double digits, one of those being Brittany Anyaje, who led with 19 points. Alexa Williamson put up 19 of her own, but the Owls didn't get enough support around her and got outscored in every quarter. Temple gets blown out by 37, final score 89-52. to Coach Cardoza says the right mindset wasn't there on the floor. I felt like even beyond the turnovers, because we will turn the ball over. That's something that we're not gonna be perfect and we will make mistakes. But I was more disappointed in how we responded. I felt like as a whole, we just shut down. Like, here we go again, we're turning the ball over. Instead of really banding together and focusing more on getting stops, we are about halfway through February, and it's an important month for college hoops. Let's go ahead and take a few minutes now to talk about these Temple teams, both men and women. First, we'll start off with the women's team. Uh, Alex, you know, Temple took a big loss against Houston, um, another one. This team now is only one spot above them in the conference. Are these struggles going to continue, or do you think that this is just kind of a bump in the road? Yeah, so, I mean, you said we're halfway through February, and it's going to be an important month for college basketball. Is it going to be important for, for Temple University and their sports? I don't think it's going to be that important, to be honest with you. Um, this this women's team has actually showed a lot of fight all season. I think they're a way better team than, than where they sit in the standings. But listen, they're top five, uh, and the fall off after that is huge. Are they going to be in a, in a tournament, or are they going to be – fighting to win to win their conference no but uh can they make some noise uh, i do think they can but a bump in the road it's more of a hill for them and uh, i i think it's going to be more uh more towards looking to next season than it is focusing on this one uh that we're in right now but i do have a question for you brooklyn um they do have six more games uh, and one of them is including number 16 ranked ucf uh at usf i'm sorry then they have ucf and then you see memphis twice i mean memphis isn't a great team but you got to see them twice. Where do you see this team ending up in the conference? Sure. So like you said, with their six games remaining, those are going to be the most difficult matchups. Those four right there, you use CF USF and then Memphis twice. And like you said before, you know, seeing that Memphis team twice in such a short narrow period, um, it's not asking for two, you know, you're, they're not going to get handed two wins, no matter what Memphis's conference record is. I think they're like two and six right now. Wow. Um, but the only team with a worse record than Temple to hand them a loss was Cincinnati. You know, they, they lost twice to Houston, twice to Tulane. Um, but then 
you have to look ahead to postseason now, like you were kind of mentioning with the AAC championship. I don't see them falling much lower than they are right now, sitting at that five seed. Um, and our producer, Brian, took a couple minutes to, to talk about this with us, and he brought up a really great point. If they were to stay in that five seed, looking ahead to the conference, they'd get a first day bye, and then they'd end up playing Houston, which isn't great news seeing how they've done so far against them, uh, against the Cougars this season. So we'll see, looking ahead to the postseason. That's my thought. I think they're in a pretty good spot sitting on that five seed right now. But let's go ahead and move over to the men's team. Alex, what are your expectations for the rest of their season? It hasn't been a great season so far. Do you think that they make a February run? I mean, no. I mean, I don't, a February run? Uh, I don't think they're going to make a February jog, a walk. They're not going to do anything in February. Um, listen, they know they can beat Tulsa. They have them again. They know they can beat UCF. They've done that. Um, but, I mean, that's no promise with this team, okay? Because because even those games had you, you breathing for air in the beginning of them. But they're scheduled for a Cincy rematch tonight. That's going to be interesting to consider what happened last time with them starting a walk-on coming into the Leah Core Center um, after not playing for two weeks and still beating still beating Temple. I mean, what was that? But, listen, they haven't seen ESU. Uh, they haven't seen ECU. They haven't seen Memphis. They haven't seen USF. Uh, they have to go go past them them three in the, in the final stint of their season. They play Wichita State one more time too, and last time they played them, it was a close game. It was a three point loss, and I'm pretty sure in the second half uh, there was only a one point differential with Temple being down one point. But listen, this Temple team is is still figuring out who they are. Are they contending in anything? Not at all. They're not contending in anything. Um, so yeah, they're not uh, February run. They're not even. They're not even walking. They're not walking. Also happening on the floor of McGonagall, Temple Volleyball is undefeated as they prepare to open conference play at USF this Friday afternoon. Their latest win comes from a sweep against St. John's at home this past Saturday. The first set was a close 25-23 win for the Yales, while the next two sets were won by bigger margins. Temple got another huge day out of My Ray Bulacasi, who led the team with 14 kills. Junior Jem Grimshaw finished with a double-double, 10 kills, and digs. This past Monday, the late coach John Chaney was laid to rest in a public viewing and a celebration of life ceremony at the Leah Corus Center. The sports desk, Jonah Wooten, was at the event and has the story. Behind me is the Leah Corus Center, where for 24 years, John Chaney was the leader of the Temple Men's Basketball Program. Today, family, friends, former players, and former coaches all come together to celebrate the life of the man who called this place home for nearly a quarter century. He was an activist. He was a civil rights leader. He made a difference as a teacher, as a coach, and his greatest impact probably came from his genuine humanity and his concerned empathy. I don't know that I met a man more empathetic in my life. During his tenure on North Broad, Coach Cheney led this program to 17 NCAA tournament appearances, including five appearances in the Elite Eight. And Cheney also won eight regular season Atlantic 10 championships with the Owls. And he's coached some of the greats over the years, including Mark Jackson, Mark Macon, and current head coach Aaron McKee. Coach, you gave me that opportunity at life, the one I always wanted. No more, no less. Everything I am today is because of you. I love you. May you rest in peace and strength. Coach Chaney not only leaves behind an incredible coaching career, but also the legacy of changing the lives of generations of student athletes. For Temple Update, I'm John O'Leary. Thank you, Jonah. That'll do it for this week's episode of Temple Timeout. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social medias at TU underscore sports desk to stay connected. And hey, have, have a happy Valentine's Day. Uh, you know, we should start buying our significant others some experiences, you know, and less materialistic things. Honestly, you know, I, I, I just really wish that I had a girlfriend. So, so hey, goodbye. See you later. Adios. Truly coming up with a hello and goodbye. Starting to get really difficult. So, chat. <laughs>